Starting every day as I like to. Bright and early. Come and say hello to me cows. Now these uh, guys and gals are doing very good indeed. Health-wise, I've been really quite fortunate. Uh, we only had that one incident uh, last year it was where we had a bit of a gammy hoof on one of the heifers. Um, apart from that, they're soldiering on. Strong as an ox, quite literally. Um, yeah, healthy as hell. And uh, money-wise, they have been pumping out the milk. We got a huge amount of money for the milk last month. And it just keeps going and going. It's uh, absolutely incredible. But we're in October. October is time to harvest the corn. We're now, field-wise, obviously, our massive field of corn over there. It's the talk of the town. It has been for quite a while. Oh, there's Jack. Jack's on his way. And Jake. Jack and Jake are going to be uh, running grain cart for both me and Clara today. Pretty much a similar setup to what we had with the soybeans, but just uh, slightly bigger. <laughs> I think it is going to take us the majority of the day to do this. So uh, me and Clara have been busy since uh, very early this morning doing the usual jobs, getting the uh, manure and the slurry sorted out in preparation for this because uh, we've got a huge job ahead of us. There he is. Good man. Bright and early, as I'd expect him. Bit of green on the farm. <laughs> But yeah, with uh, cornfield wise, it's 189 acres, 76 and a half hectares. Now I'm hoping for a yield, anything around the 15, 15 to 16 uh, tons per hectare. If that comes to fruition, um, we're likely to get give or take a bit, roughly 1,210 tons of corn. Um, and obviously, as I always do, trying to plan ahead. And I know it's not particularly accurate because the prices do change. But uh, speaking to the grain buyers, if I can keep hold of it for a while, we could be looking at uh, an earnings from that field of uh, just shy of $400,000, which is absolutely incredible. It really is. Uh, and obviously, we've got the silo ready and waiting to dry it off. Uh, and I need to go and pay a visit over there. Now I've uh, done my little cow walk. There we go. I'm going to zip my way around to the silo. I need to pull the blanket off the grate there to have it ready for Jack and Jake to start tipping into. And we'll just so we're go and have one last quick check in the fields, check everything's okay. Weather-wise, we've been quite fortunate these last couple of weeks. We had a drop of rain uh, about a week and a half ago, I think. But apart from that, it's uh, it's been relatively mild. It's a bit cold here today. It's early, early days in October now, so uh, moisture could start rising a bit, but at the minute, conditions are absolutely perfect, if you ask me. So, let's go uh, get myself around to the silo and get that cover pulled back. And of course, on top of the earnings we're going to get from the corn, uh, we've also got the corn stalks uh, that I can... Uh, get gathered up and taken over to Tahitian County Fairgrounds because they pay about $800 per tonne. Now I've got no idea of the tonnage that we could uh, get from the field here but either way that's uh, a more imminent income stream that we'll be able to get some money from almost straight away in fact so that's uh, that's a good thing but I have also been thinking on into the future and regarding fields and crops and crop rotation and all that kind of stuff we are actually within the planting window of winter wheat right now um, and it might be a nice change I think but what that would mean based on planting times and harvest times and stuff we might actually miss corn this year uh, next year if we do if we if we were to do that which is fine um, it'd be nice for a bit of a bit of a bit of a change a bit of variety wouldn't it but essentially if I can get these this corn out the ground now We've got the soybean field that is currently empty. There's weeds growing in that and it could do with the mulch running over it. Uh, but if I get this corn out of the ground now and if I can turn it around real quick, run the mulcher in here as well, uh, we could then plant all three fields. When I say three fields, this field, the soybean field and the field at the top there that we had the oats in. Um, get it all planted with a winter wheat and, uh, and go from there. We'll get that out the ground uh, very early it, very early in June next year, ideally, if I can pull my finger out, we pull it all out the ground in June, get it into the silo, and June, that would mean June would be a very, very busy month because I'd have to get all three fields harvested and get all three fields turned around because then I could very quickly get a uh, another crop of beans into the ground if we do that. 
So it's something to think about, food for thought, so to speak. But yeah, just come to check on the corn and uh, just check everything is as it should be, which of course it really is. Um, if you're interested, if you wanted to know how to tell when corn is ready, if you look at the top of the uh, the top of the curd, top of the cob there, um, it's turned a kind of chocolate brown colour. Uh, what you want to do, you want to peel back a leaf off the husk. Uh, and kind of pierce it, pierce a kernel with your fingernail. Uh, and what we're looking for is a creamy liquid when you when you pierce it with your fingernail. If it's watery, then the uh, the crop isn't ripe enough. And if it, if when you pierce it, you get like a paste-like substance come out, then you know that it's over matured. Uh, but as we speak right now, it is perfect. We are getting a nice uh, nice creamy liquid coming from these. I have been round the other side of the field earlier on and just checked that out. And it's all good. So, I think it's time to rock and roll, isn't it? We need to go and just do run a couple of checks on the combines. I do have them out in the yard with the corn headers attached. They've all been fueled up. The, uh, the combines are absolutely filthy from the bean harvest, but the corn headers are absolutely immaculate because they haven't been used properly yet. So, uh, since their last cleaning. So, let's get back to the farm. Like I said, I think Jack and Jake are up there ready and waiting. Clara will be waiting as well. We've got the trailers hooked up to the Optum and to one of the Magnums, the one with the floaters. And uh, yeah, as you can see there, field of weeds. But if, uh, like I said before, if I run the mulcher in that, turn that over, hopefully turn all three fields around relatively quickly. Get ourselves into a bit of winter wheat this year. So that'll be good. Right. Let's part this up. And get the ball rolling, shall we? Alright, this one's all good for now. Let's get that folded up so we can shove it over to the field. I'm just going to run this one very quickly. Just give it a quick check, but so far... Everything is looking and sounding as good as it needs to. All running smoothly. Excellent stuff. Excellent stuff. It's all greased up, fueled up, ready to go. So, let's crank that off, fold it up. Now, this time, I'm going to stick with the Patriot this time. Clara has uh, requested if she can run in the big Julie here, so that's absolutely fine with me. So, let's stop procrastinating, shall we? Let's get ourselves over to the field and get this started. Now, this is going to take a huge amount of time. I've got no idea how long. We're obviously we're going to stop for a bit of lunch in a few hours' time. Um, but yeah, many, many hours ahead of us. Uh, this is all we're going to be doing today. We've got no more jobs on the cards. We've uh, we've done what we needed to do first thing as early as we could. Got the, all the cows and the manure and the slurry shifted over to the biogas plant to give us as much time ahead of us as possible. So, let's crack on. Right, this is us. Here's one of them now. The other one will be following shortly behind, no doubt. Me and Clara are ready to rock and roll. I'm going to run left-hand lane. She's going to run on the right. And these guys are going to follow. Now, obviously, we're bit, these are the corn stalks that we've got lying in the ground here. You can't really see them very well, can you, against the uh, harvested corn? But they are there, I promise you. <laughs> right, anyway. This is going to be a big one. Let's get it done. If 
very quick update harvest report as it were we have just got north of 220 tons in the uh, corn dryer at the minute and that's just the headlands admittedly it's a 24 meter wide headland of course but one headland nonetheless so yield is looking very good so far now we need to correct something i uh, slightly missed off earlier on obviously when i was walking around the uh, cow pasture earlier talking about money i hadn't turned the bit of paper over that i was reading from that had been scrumpled up in my pocket and of course it's been a long day already <laughs> uh, but of course the prices i uh, was quoting was for corn and uh, we're not going to be selling it as normal run-of-the-mill corn it's going to be dried corn isn't it so the price of that is considerably more more than double roughly about 684 dollars a ton so doing the mathematics on that we are looking at a a full earnings from this anywhere in the region of 800 to 900 thousand dollars which is absolutely brilliant that I'd obviously uh, how something like that can slip my mind I do not know but what can I say as I said it's been a long day lots to think about that's my excuses anyway <laughs> anyway plenty plenty more to do many hours ahead of us so let's crack on Do you know what? There is something altogether wonderful about spending a whole day in a field with your mates running a big job like this. What a day. It's been so much fun. Been laughing and giggling over the radios all day, putting the world to rights, having a laugh. But yeah, just perfect. 
And to make it even better, the numbers were way more than what uh, I was hoping for. I think I'd mentioned something about 1,200 tonnes, hopefully, uh, yield out of this field. No, way more. 1,631 tonnes, to be absolutely precise. So, scribbling down a little bit of more basic mathematics on my knee as I was in the harvester there. We are looking at a yield, at a uh, income, sorry, uh, when it comes to a full load of dried corn just north of 1.1 million dollars <laughs> that's amazing i cannot wait for that i tell you what i could buy a whole new 715 with that not that i'm going to of course but uh yeah what a day we've got a beer in hand now just chilling out the work doesn't stop there though we've got a huge load to crack on with we're not going to be doing anything today we've uh, we've earned ourselves a bit of a rest tonight so uh i think i'm going to do us a bit of a barbecue have a bit of uh bit of food chill out enjoy the rest of the day the sky's cleared up as you can see sun's out beautiful evening couldn't ask for more could we but yeah work is gonna crack on first thing in the morning we need to run the windrower in here and row up all these corn stalks get those picked up and sent over to to heat and fairgrounds get a load of money in for that i'm interested to see what we'll get for that because uh, the tonnage they uh, quoted for was pretty decent i think they said about something about $800 a ton I think so that's uh, it's going to be something to look forward to and then we have to get these fields really quickly turned around in order to be able to achieve a winter wheat drilling uh, in the next few weeks so as I said we're going to enjoy the rest of the evening sit back chill out after a beautiful day's harvest <laughs> 